Hi, everybody. Greg Wilkins back here with you with another edition of The Daily Pause, a devotional of positivity and encouragement for Monday, May 22nd, 2023. I pray that you not only have a very blessed day today, but that today's devotional will also serve as an encouragement, a motivation, and an inspiration for you and put a smile on your face as well. Like us, follow us, subscribe us, as well as leave comments and birthday shout outs and anniversary shout outs and any other information for like song requests or anything else like that to us by checking out my Facebook page, The Daily Pause, my YouTube channel, Greg Wilkins, or you can follow us on Twitter at Greg Wilkins 78 or text me at 864-860-1522. Once again, I thank you for watching. I hope everybody has a blessed day and always remember that God loves you, God cares for you, and God will always be there for you. Well, let's get started with today's devotional entitled, What Am I Doing? Now, I've said this many times on this devotional and it still rings true to this day. You wanna get angry real quick? Watch the news. Is there something on the news that gets you riled up and frustrated and aggravated, whether it be politically, whether it be socially, economically, financial, financial, no, that doesn't matter. There's always some negative news that has been portrayed to us through the news. It doesn't matter if you watch the cable news networks or if you go through social media and find your news there, or if you're just watching the local news. There's something going on all over the world, 24 hours a day. And with the availability of technology now, it's very easy to get the access of the information that we need and sometimes that we wish we didn't see, but we saw anyway. So we quickly rush to change the subject in the matter of speaking. We change the channel. We go to another website. We do something else. We, we do something to get our minds off of what we just saw, even though we're still in our ways about it. Only to realize all we got to do is just look at our window. All we got to do is just look at our own neighborhoods. Sometimes the dilapidation and the immorality and the depression and the frustration and the aggravation and the violence and the suffering and all the things that we see on the news are are happening right side outside our doors or sometimes inside our own homes and sometimes a little bit of both and everything so it's very easy for us to find ourselves looking at something like for example i'll speak about my own self when uh about a month or so ago when the teenagers went on the a violent spree in Chicago. All the teenagers met up in downtown Chicago. They were just wrecking stores, hitting cars, running up and just punching random people in the face, chasing down police officers, hunting down police officers, doing any and everything they seemingly could, all because they just felt angry and frustrated or just they felt like doing it. And I was saying to myself, this don't make no sense. Where are their parents? What is going to be done about this? Somebody has got to do something about this. And I was getting frustrated and aggravated. And at the very same time, I flashed back to a little speech that was given almost 28 years ago by a good friend of mine and a mentor of mine, Donovan Waddell. He and I were both selected to attend the Clemson Minority Workshop in the mid 90s. I was going into my junior year. He was going into his senior year and At the end of that week long program, they had a banquet for all of us and some of the uh, rising seniors had an opportunity to to go speak. And he stood up and he spit, he spoke and he said, I'll never forget this. He said this is like, we are the best of the best. We are the cream of the crop. There is nothing that we cannot accomplish. There is nothing that we cannot do. However, at the same time, it doesn't mean that we don't have to put in the work. We have the information, the knowledge and the wealth of whatever we have to do what we got to do. And just because we're the cream of the crop doesn't mean we still have to work. We don't have to give back. We've got to find our place and we've got to be able to do something with it, not just sit on it and not just let it grow in the inside of us and die. And that seems to be confirmation in my life because uh, almost two years ago, I met Pastor Happy Feet and he and I are partners at Sight Beyond Sight Entertainment. And by the way, quick aside, if you're looking for a podcast that gives you information, inspiration, and some laughs in a gentle, lighthearted way, check out the Sight Beyond Sight podcast available on all your your uh, podcast platforms. It's great. It's it's fantastic. Not just saying it because I'm on it and he's on it, but it's, a, it's really great to help you alleviate some stress and give you some information, some inspiration, and some laughs. <laughs> Most of the time at my expense, but it's all good. It's great. And I hope you check that out as well. 
And because he always said, Pastor Happy Feet always said, we are not designed to die fool. We get information, we get wealth, we get wisdom, we get wealth, whether it be financially, socially, intellectually, we get wealth placed into our lives. It is not our purpose. It was not God's purpose for us to obtain what we get and keep it and then die with it. Whatever we get, we should be willing to share that. And the same thing Donovan was saying over 28 years ago, and it was reconfirmed in my life about two years ago. And when I thought about what he said, when I thought about what Pastor Happy Feet always says, when I think about what my pastor says, always be able to be a light to somebody because you never know who may need and you never know who's watching you. My pastor, Apostle Willie Rooker, is a very example of those words. He's always an encourager. He's always an influencer because he knows that people are watching. Sometimes he doesn't know people are watching, but he acts the way in a way that he carries himself with poise. He carries himself with honor. He carries himself with wisdom and grace. And that's what God has bestowed on him. What has God given us? What has God given to us to do? We want, we may say, well, I don't live in Chicago. What can I do in Chicago? Well, I don't live in New York. I don't know what's going on over there. I don't live in San Francisco. I don't know what I can do about the homelessness in San Francisco or in Los Angeles or in Seattle or in Chicago or in Houston or in San Antonio or in Washington, D.C. or in New York City or in Boston or in Topeka, Kansas or in Albuquerque, New Mexico or in Dallas, Texas or in Santa Fe, New Mexico or in New Orleans, Louisiana or in Orlando, Florida or in Charleston, South Carolina or in Charlotte, North Carolina or wherever else you may not not be, but wherever you are, the Bible reminds us to let our lights shine and, and it's that men might see our good works and glorify our father, which is in heaven, whatever he's given us to do, let us do it with all our might. So instead of asking the question, what are they going to do? We hear it all the time. What are the Democrats going to do about this? What are Republicans going to do about this? What is Biden going to do about this? What is Trump going to do about this? What is DeSantos going to do about this? What is Senator Lindsey Graham going to do about this? What is Congressman um, Nancy Pelosi going to do about this? What is the Speaker of the House going to do about this? What is the Vice President going to do about this? What is the CEO of company fill in the blank going to do about this? What are we going to do about this? More importantly, turning it back on ourselves, what am I doing about this whatever we can do to enhance the, the community and surroundings around us is what we should be doing because what if that was what if that was us on the other side what would we want somebody to do for us how would we want somebody to approach us it's easy to carry a bible and smack somebody over their heads and say, you got to do this or you're going to hell and they will reject you and everything you say after that. My cousin and, and my older brother, I might as well call him Elder Dell Hutchinson, has always said, no one will care what you know until they know that you care. And that's the heart of, of the, the having a heart of compassion and love and grace like the Lord has given to us. And that's the last commandment he gave us, that we love each other as he loved us. And by this, they will know that we are his disciples by the love we show one to another. How can we say that we love God and we worship God and we give him our all and give him our best. And then we smite the person that we see on the on the street that we don't know what they're going through. Or we smite our own brother and sister in that way or our friends or our family or, or anyone that we see. We treat other people with disdain, but, but yet we say we love God. How can that be? It can't be. So we've got to understand, yes, we are great and greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And through God, we are more than conquerors, but we can't let it stop there. We've got to reach out and do what we can do. It doesn't matter what it is, whether financially, socially, economically, just giving a good encouraging word, just saying hi to somebody, just giving somebody a smile, just just giving somebody a call you haven't spoken to in a while, or, or a text message, or or, or I or DMing somebody. With all the technology we have, if we have ways to contact somebody, you never know what somebody is going through, and you never know what may be the thing that we can do to keep somebody from going over the edge. That's what we need to do. That's what I need to do. So what am I doing? What are we doing? Instead of asking, what are they doing? And leaving it at someone else's feet. It's that old mentality of, oh, somebody else will do it. We hear somebody crying for help. Well, somebody will call the police. Why not us? We see somebody suffering. 
why not us? Lest the worlds be reversed. That could be us. Sometimes it should have been us. But by God's grace, we were able to make it through. And by his wisdom and love that he continues to supply to us every day, we are able to get through our tough times. So let's share how we got through with somebody else. It just makes make somebody's day. Now, today's feature song is a song going back to 1994 from the album Live, a celebration of praise by Orlando Draper and the Associates. It's a, it's a choir from the Memphis, Tennessee area. And the name of this song is Throw Out the Lifeline. Now, I'm sure this is an old, I'm not sure, I, I'm, I'm sure, I definitely know this is an older song, but it's been remade and kind of re-souped up from 1994 standards by Orlando Draper and the Associates. And it's just a, it's an impactful and beautiful song that just says, throw out the lifeline. Someone is drifting away. So reach out and help somebody who may be drifting away. Grab a hold. Don't let go. Throw out, carry your lifeline, save someone's souls, but you gotta make sure that your anchor is holding and gripped onto the solid rock so that you're not tempted and you fall into anything that's diverse or, or, or demoralizing in your own life. Whatever you do, pray about it first. Seek God for wisdom on how you handle it. And then go with that same love of God and carry your lifeline and let your light shine for anyone and everyone that you see. Don't do it for stage notoriety. Don't try to do it for, for big eyes and little use. It ain't about you. It's not about us. It's about God being glorified. That's why that scripture says, let your light so shine and, and men might see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven, because it's him that saved us. It's him that, that sanctified us. It's him that brought us back from where we are. And it's only him that can bring somebody else that way. We are just a conduit to help somebody get to Christ. And however God gives us and whatever God gives us to do that, that's what we should do. So what am I doing? That's what I should be doing. Helping somebody by throwing out the lifeline. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We are so blessed to see another day. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your love and your mercy and the blood that you shed on the cross that saved us all. Lord, by recognizing you as our Lord and Savior, we thank you for fulfilling that hole and that void in our lives that has made us stronger and brought us to where we are. So, Lord, we ask you, help us to help somebody, to love somebody the same way you loved us, to treat somebody the same way you treated us, to, to, to just encourage somebody the same way you encouraged us. And let us do so regardless of race, read, uh, uh, race, creed, religion, color, ethnicity, background, social status, economic status, intelligence, it doesn't matter. We are still the same and we bleed the same. You didn't care about our downfall. So let's not care about somebody else's downfall as we do what we can to help somebody else. And be with us as we go here and there and everywhere, proclaiming your love and your grace and your mercy to a dark and cruel world that the light still shines because you are still in us, because there is hope because you are still in us. And let your peace ride and rest and rule and abide with us wherever we go that in peace we can make the decisions that we need to make to be the best representative of you in this world today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is the part of our devotional in which we give birthday and anniversary shout outs. I didn't have any birth, I didn't have any anniversary shout outs, excuse me, on my data banks, but today we wanna to wish a very special happy birthday to Joy Ballinger and happy birthday to Bishop Daryl Beeson. Bishop Beeson, and Joy, happy birthday to you both. May God bless you with many more birthdays and enjoy your birthday on today. Remember, make sure to send in your birthday or anniversary shout outs as well as any comments or any uh, song requests that you would like to see featured as a part of the Daily Pause devotional by sending your info to the places I mentioned earlier in this devotional. I pray that today's devotional is an encouragement for you and an inspiration for you. And I truly hope that you all have a blessed day. Thank you for watching today's edition of the Daily Pause. Continue to love each other and continue to be safe. And remember, every day there's always time to take a pause. And Lord willing, I will see you again on tomorrow. Enjoy today's feature song, Throw Out the Lifeline, performed by Olanda Draper and the Associates Choir from Memphis, Tennessee, from their 1994 album, Live, a Celebration of Praise, produced by Curb Records and an Association of Word Incorporated. I pray you're blessed and may God continue to cover you, keep you, and increase you in all that you do, say, and think. 
Today's feature song starts right now. God bless.
anybody need to throw out the lifeline? Maybe you got a family member on drugs and you, you got to throw out the lifeline and give. Maybe your daughter is a teenager and she's pregnant. This is not the time to leave her. Church is not the time to leave our young people because of mistakes. Somebody is in need. Somebody has a problem. You had a problem. But somebody threw out the lifeline. Do the last one. I said someone.